Okay. Hey all out there. Happy St. Patty's Day to you all. Uh, weird, weird St. Patty's Day. Weird past couple of weeks. Right, Oz? Right. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy out there. And uh, I just want to point out that we're having technical difficulties because everybody's at home working from home and studying from home and elections. So if we drop out, I apologize. So our bandwidth is obviously not sufficient for the load uh, of everybody being home. I think a lot of bored kids, a lot of bored adults, uh, fear, fearful adults, and probably some kids too. Um, the elections, it all adds up. And this is not even just a, a, a Massachusetts or United States issue. I mean, this is going on all over the world. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty wild and crazy out there, and uh, <laughs> I I, I want to say I appreciate you uh, you coming on uh, tonight with your show. <laughs> and as soon as I get a chance, I'll get our graphic up so you can see my uh, my Medusa head in the in the window. So we'll get going on that. So if you oh, give you're me not a, up yet. Get I am that, not up that. yet. I I'm just I ran a little bit behind with the titling, and of course it took me. I had to get out the crank and turn the internet over to get us online, so that's that's why it was so slow getting up tonight. Okay, all right. Uh, I saw, by the way, you posted something in Truth, Truth Bomb about the Dropkick Murphys. Um, if we do an attribute to them, can we do a quick rip on on Dropkick Murphys for all the uh, frustrated Irishmen out there and and the I, the the Irish. Uh, for the day, I will. Folks. I will try and cue that up. I will try and cue Let's that. Cue up. that up. Yeah. I Get will. this party rolling. Yeah, I will try and do that. Um, it's as close it, as we're getting. Yeah, this is about it. So <laughs> we can go from there. So, uh, what's on your uh, palate or your plate tonight, Suzanne? Uh, you know, lots of things to discuss. It's funny. Um, my boyfriend and I went out to the grocery, the local market. And it's been an adventure pretty much the last three times I've, I've ventured out. Um, and I got to the point where I'm really, I'm starting to get, <laughs> I think he was worried about me. It's like, calm down. I'm starting to get kind of vocal. And I actually went up to the, to the register and I said, can I ask you something? Are you guys doing anything about controlling the hoarding? Are you all limiting people to their purchases because it's ridiculous. I mean, there was a poor woman with her son in the grocery aisle and she had to, she couldn't find what she, she needed for dinner. So she was ordering a pizza from the grocery store. I mean, it's bizarre, bizarre. And I struck up a conversation with a, a elderly gentleman um, who was obviously risking his life going out to get food. Um, and, uh, we had a really cool conversation about, you know, I start off by saying, you know, I, I kind of want to patrol the, the meat section with a small baseball bat or something, a, a baton, and just kind of whack people if they take more than two. Two items. No, no, yeah, three. You know, it's just, it's just surreal. Um, it's not a food shortage, folks. As many of you who are tuned in probably already are aware, and I'm preaching to the choir it's a virus. It's, we still have plenty of food and we even have plenty of toilet paper. Um, so I don't know. The whole thing is just become dystopian, surreal, and um, we better have our sense of humor intact because that is probably my first line of defense when I'm, when I'm dealing with this stuff is I have to, I have to make myself laugh because otherwise I might actually slap somebody. Well, I, if you do, make sure you take pictures. I, I'm sure every, <laughs> everybody would love to see that. And, and I got to tell you, I, <laughs> I think there's so many people on the same page as you and I are uh, that it isn't funny. I mean, this, this, the world has gone crazy uh, in, yeah. in, you know, and really for all kinds of reasons. But in such a short time span, and I'm going to say it was nuts before the first Super Tuesday, but mm -hmm. now it's just off the rails, you know, yeah. off the rails, yeah. totally off the rails. So 
or I don't know. It is. And I think, you know, we've talked about in, in Truth Bomb all the time, we talk about context. Um, it's really an important element when you're assessing anything that's going on in current events, when you're, when you're looking at um, whether you want to call them false flags, you want to call them unusual events, you want to call them, you know, if you're conspiracy theorists, um, tin foil hatter person, um, you know, you can, there are lots of different, um, terms that have been bandied about, but basically, um, any event, no matter what your point of view, it's really important not to, uh, act, re respond to it and, and react to it immediately to slow things down. And honestly, one of the positives, the takeaways from, uh, this entire pandemic will be, in my opinion, the fact that society has been forced to slow down. Um, we are finding ourselves more homebound. We are finding ourselves face to face with family members, um, with those who hopefully uh, are, you know, we're in relationship with that means something to us as, as we're, we're hunkering down. Um, and there's great value in having that time with people for connection, but also great value in terms of times to reflect and step back and slow down the frames. They're moving really fast and look at what's happening and assess everything and give these events really important context. Um, so it's not surprising to me um, that we are having experiencing what we're experiencing the level what i'm seeing in terms of human behavior is i, I guess i shouldn't be surprised I'm, I'm i think appalled would be might be a better word um although it's not all bad i've seen some really amazing uh acts of humanity and gestures and ideas and concepts emerge through this as well so um one of the things I saw a post recently was about somebody who it was a handwritten post that was taken a letter was taken an image of it. And um, one of our bombers posted it. And it was about uh, some people, I believe in California who were going around their community and locking on doors and to find out who were the people who were, um, you know, the elderly in the more at risk uh, age group. Um, in their communities, in their neighborhoods, or those with underlying health conditions, or those that are homebound, or whatever, even if it's not an age age uh, differentiator, and asking them if there anything that they needed, would they like them to uh, the, the people that were volunteering to do a to, to do a grocery store run or to get them supplies or whatever the case may be to check in on them, kind of do a wellness check. So it's an opportunity for us to also look at other human beings and and see them as such and um, celebrate those who are thinking along those lines, because those are the people that I want to be associated with. Those are the people that I care about. Those are the people that that um, lift me up and um, the others, the hoarders, the me first and screw everybody else. Um, you know, it's those are the ones that. Uh, lock the people in, in, in the, the you know, steerage class on the Titanic when it was going down. Those are not people I want to be associated with. Um, so we can decide through all this as we ride this out, who we want to be, what kind of folks we want to be. So uh, context is important because look what was happening, the events leading up to this pandemic and the United States, uh, in the country, in the world. Look at the address. Look at how many uh, legions of, of people, whether it's France with the, with the protesters against Macron and against uh, the measures, the, the draconian measures that they, they feel their government is taking, whether it's that was going on the protests in, in, in um, Asia, um, certainly the unrest of the 99% in this country with Sanders, gaining the momentum that he, he did gain and being the designated front runner, runner until the, the Biden miracle. 
Um, that's context. And I look at that and I say, I don't, I don't trust that what has happened with the pandemic is necessarily an organic uh, kind of a freak of nature um, uh, event. I just don't um, because the timing is, is again, context uh, gives me reason to pause. No, I, I think you're, uh, you're right on. And as I've told many, many people that I've talked to this week, I'm of two minds on this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's the timing is uncanny for this has never happened. This, this point in time has never happened before in my lifetime. I think our lifetime, we're, we're close. Yeah. You're much younger than I am, mm -hmm. but still, um, yeah. it's, it's just, I was talking to my brother about two hours ago and he's like, you know, looking at this pandemic and treating it a little bit more um oh god what's the word i'm looking for he's being a little bit obtuse or being not being too uh he's being too carefree about it you know um not to mm. the point of touching microphones and things like that but he's not exercising in my opinion for his own safety no matter what it is you know if you don't know what's happening around you you're not going to step out of the airlock uh, is what All i'm right. saying you you've All got right. you got All something right. like that and so I'm concerned that that him, he and other people who are kind of of the same mindset uh, are out there like that, which comes back to the point you were making. Uh, this timing of this crap is too convenient. And it's yeah. a double edged sword when you're looking at it from the election standpoint, because how can this help each candidate? Uh, what can it do to the electorate? Let let electorate. And, right. you know, I'm thinking, wow, you know, is Trump going to get reelected because of how well he handles this pandemic? Or is Biden going to get elected because he's the candidate they're shoving down our throat and everybody's scared to death? So they're scared to death. Well, they got scared to death into voting for Biden. You know, it's just, it, it makes me crazy. It's ripping my brains apart. So wh what do you feel about that? I'm going to go back to conversations we've had before, which is, you know, that which 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 gun do you want to shoot yourself in the foot with? I mean, you know, it's like they're they're no different. Yeah. The end result for the United States citizens and for the world, sadly, whether you get Biden in office or whether you get Trump in office, it's essentially the same. Yep. So so I'm not to me, it's like I'm not going to split atoms in terms of oh my god which which lesser evil is you know it, shot or stabbed <laughs> yeah he's shot or stabbed or poisoned you yeah. know uh so i look at that and i say okay so it's the establishment is loaded in as we know the the overriding let's say the popular establishment um is behind biden uh no doubt um but in, if you if you fold into that that equation the mainstream media the you know the unelected bureaucrats, which many refer to as as deep state, the power brokers, the power elites, the consulting class within the Beltway, the the banking, uh, financial, the markets people, um, they're they're going to be behind Biden. Not that there aren't there there aren't going to be divisions even within those groups that that have been fractured because of Trump's uh, presidency, but. You know, whether it's the military industrial complex or, or it's pharmaceuticals or whether it's big oil or whether it's big chemical, um, it doesn't matter. They're, they're always at the trough. Uh, they're at the trough no matter what. Um, and what I, when I, the thing that I, I put a post up, um, a public post, I, I believe, I, I don't think it was just in TBA, and I had talked about the watch the Fed. Okay. Oh yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, that post got a lot. Of, it got a lot of response, and I, and I'm I'm glad I'm grateful that it did. But I, but that's the context that I'm talking about because back in October of 2019, nobody was really paying attention to it. I remember making us think about it. I mean, you know, to the to the point that I could. I wasn't doing YouTube's at the time. Um, but I, I did call out many times and post a number of articles about the Fed's 
uh, doing billions of dollars, seven billion a week, five billion, you know, a few days later, billions of dollars. I can't remember how much they they they, they pushed into the overnight lending markets, into the overnight overnight lend to to get the overnight lending, the bank to bank overnight lending rate to come down to its normal ranges, but to think which is between two and three percent is interest rate points that they charge to lend money from bank to bank to cover their daily transactions. That was dried up. So the money had been taken out, removed from the banking system. And we're talking the Goldman Sachs. We're not talking, you know, your community bank. We're talking the big banks. We're talking Bank of America, Chase, the, the big JP Morgan. The, these, these are the big companies. Um, and the feds were infusing billions into the overnight lending um, uh, markets because there was no cash. But nobody asked why there was no liquidity. Nobody was demanding to know, why is this happening? And they were doing it, and they were doing it without a lot of fanfare because of, I believe it was... Uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, and it might have been Sarbanes-Oxley or Dad Frank, but I feel like it was uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, that when we had the last bailout of the banking system that we all remember in 2008, they passed a law that basically said they didn't have to go before Congress to be rescued, to have these infusions. They didn't have to debate it. They didn't have to the, the, they didn't, the Treasury Department didn't have to get permission. The banking institutions didn't have to um, air this out uh, as a congressional matter to get the bailout, which would have brought a lot of attention to the issue of why there was no liquidity. Um, so I'm going to surmise, and as I, as I said when, we were, when I posted on Facebook, that the money, those in the know, who knew where, where, what was going to be coming up in 2020. Um, and there was a lot of speculation earlier on, before October 2019, I think as early as the spring, I saw speculation from those in the financial, who know much more about the financial markets, that were saying that there was no way that the, uh, the establishment, those who were the adversaries of the Trump administration, um, we're going to allow him to go into the 2020 election season with bragging rights on the economy. That was like the number one thing that they needed to take away from him. Um, and we can debate the merits of how good of an economy it was because I've never been a big advocate of Trump. I, I don't like Trump, I didn't vote for him. Um, but you know, the, some of the metrics he's been able to use and the recovery for those with 401ks, not your average worker, um, the you know the the stock market, yeah, they they benefited, um, and they wanted to take that that away that that cudgel away from Trump to be able to use as talking points going into the twenty twenty election season. It's my belief um, that what we are seeing playing out, in part, it's riding on this pandemic. Now, are they mutually exclusive? Um, I think there's a lot of things that um, can be accomplished that can that this pandemic gives cover to uh, the chaos that it generates, the fear. People aren't focusing on what Congress is doing. They aren't focusing on other events that are happening. Um, what you mentioned today, I, I didn't hear. I didn't. I wasn't aware of it with the what's going on on Facebook. Um, who knows if they're even? I don't even know if this is airing. I don't know if it's still airing in TBA and you said that they're taking things down. Yeah, we're still um, up. We're still up in TBA. We are? And, and yeah, and okay. it's not limited to Facebook from what I understand. I've got a pretty good reach on social media and but Facebook, um, you know, the tech people from there are trying mm -hmm. to pass off it's a it's an uh, it's a an algorithm glitch because they're taking down according to the article I read puppy pictures and things like that, but I will I will just say, didn't we have a news station during the Price is Right put up the election results a day before mm -hmm. the election? So mm -hmm. it's 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 throw it out there, throw the red meat out there, do whatever's going to do to disrupt, then explain it away 
So you take fear and anger and you calm it down with an explanation that if you are really of a critical thinking mind, aren't going to buy it for one second. So it's, it's a win-win for them because look at what you're dealing with with the public. You fear them into getting, doing things. Well, in fairness to the, the issue, by the way, um, about the radio station or the TV station, I believe, in Illinois. Yeah, WCIA, uh, that, ironically. WCIA? <laughs> yeah, w, no ironically, wow. yes. WCIA yeah, kind of like three. that app, yeah. Buttigieg's app, the yeah. shadow app. The shadow app, um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod. Oh, my God. Um, but it's 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 kind of what I did see about that, and 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 – it was like, okay, when I first saw it, all right, that makes sense. Uh, I didn't know if I entirely bought it, but the explanation on its surface seemed okay. Um, they said it was a, they apologized immediately, they took it down. They said it was a test graphic um, that they were, they commonly do. Um, it wasn't supposed to be released onto live TV. It was supposed to be in a test environment um, to test the graphic. Mm -hmm. And uh, people kind of said, oh, OK, all right, let's we're, we're going to buy that. But then apparently another TV station surfaced using the same exact test app, test or test, uh, not test app, but test data that gave the same results. So two of them making the same mistake seems a little harder for me to to swallow. Um, but. That's what they're saying. So that's like that's their story and they're sticking to it. The whole, you know, I just look at the at the what 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 went on, you know, like I said, October, that October thing always struck me. I was like, this this is this is something this this is this is a beta test for something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This this smells and I felt it was it was basically telling us that either organically the market was, which we know has been artificially been propped up it's you know like a like a a western um uh set at universal studios this this trump's recovery and the economic you know the robust economic um boom has been um losing a lot of steam i think you know stocks are overvalued and and anybody anybody watching it knew that the end was was you know this thing was going to peter out perhaps organically um but I think what we're seeing, in my opinion, is we're seeing a controlled or perhaps a poorly controlled, because I got to be careful about this, uh, crash that was intended to take place. I, I, you know, and those in October and those, the wealthy elites, obviously they're going to be in the know on that. They're going to take their money out. They're going to reallocate it somewhere else. It's going to sit on the sidelines or they're going to leverage it uh, and, 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 and play the, play the, play the ride down, which is what they did in 2008 with through the reinsurance market. They bet it, they bet against their own stocks um, and their own junk bonds um, on failing and, and they made more money that way. Yeah. I, you know, this is, I'm fortunate to be able to sit in a room and do a production with you because, you know, some people say it's better to have diverse opinions, but you and I are so in line on our views that it's really comfortable, uh, particularly when it comes to the political aspect of things. Uh, number one, I'd like Thank to you. respond to your your comments about the uh, that release, that uh, accidental uploading to television on uh, the other night from uh, WCIA mm -hmm. three. I, uh, being that I have a production studio here, it's basically the, the the concept's the same. Now, when I build a graphic, I test the graphic on the platform. I test the stream to a wall to make sure that wall does not get out. You know where people can see us. You know. And mm -hmm. uh, we're having an internet glitch there. That thing just went up. Yeah, just that the internet connect connection is unstable. Yeah, you know, it is unstable. It is. Yeah, it's and and it's it looks like it's I don't know which end it's on, uh, but to be sure, a major network, a billion dollar media company, is going to have more walls than I have to bounce my signal mm -hmm. off before it goes out. So yes, I mean the coincidence is uncanny. 
and the explanation as I saw it was incomplete or unacceptable to me all the way. And I'm not trying mm -hmm. to make up stuff. This is just things that I do on a regular basis. And some of my counterparts that have studios uh, up and down the level, you know, of, of what we can in our, our, our group and our social media, uh, pretty much agreed with what I said. I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? No, not so much. Now, right. now the other point that I'd like to address that you brought up is, yeah, they've been feeding the, the market to keep, you know, to keep it stable to where everybody's comfortable. Billions and billions of dollars through October and, you know. Um, even, pri even prior, I mean, I, yeah, I feel even like prior, there were a lot yeah. of measures. They took, they kept the interest rate so low, right, remember? Right, right, At, up to now, up to now, mm -hmm. when and everything is like it's like in slow motion what's happening except mm -hmm. it's right before our eyes so they drop the 1.5 trillion the other day you know to ease the market and then the next day it rebounded a little bit and then and dropped again and it dropped again and so what happens over the weekend uh the the futures uh crash like a bomb and mm -hmm. then they they put the the borrowing rate for the banks the borrowing rate for the banks the banks zero percent so there's mm -hmm. free money mm -hmm. for the banks but if i right. wanted to go refinance something i'm sure that i would pay a nice little percentage point for that or and, and what are, what are they doing what did they show that they were doing i just saw this recently i think it was uh new york times and maybe might, have, might even been bloomberg news these banks uh, and the airlines, yeah. by the way, as well. I know well, what you're talking about. Buy, Keep going. Buying back their stock. <laughs> stock buybacks. Buying their stock back. Yes. And not not yes. not using it the way yes. they're supposed to. They're right. buying their stock back. What does that like, remind you of? Does that remind you of an automotive bailout or something? Yeah, oh, it reminds me of gosh. 2008 all over again. So all over again. <laughs> basically, what we have is a very well executed 2008 bail out um, without all the unnecessary congressional details. Okay. It's being done under this, the, the guise of the, of the, and, and I'm not saying that COVID-19 is a guise, but it's being under the guise of the panic. They're, they're using the, the, the um, confusion, the chaos, the fugue state, the haze in society and the distraction to, you know, to tap us out again, to and to take care of their take care of their downside. The nine nine the ninety nine percent can't ride this storm out without some serious assistance. Okay, but the one percent they have they have it covered. They're so, going to be just fine. So your your point too. Okay, the ninety nine percent can't ride this out, and you said quote unquote serious. And when you say serious, what I think you're saying is not just a thousand dollar check just to throw to the people. You're talking about serious because when I see virtually the whole world shutting down and mm -hmm. people getting pink slips and businesses going by the wayside, am I am I correct in assuming that it's going to take a little bit more than some some change out of their bucket their billions and trillions of dollar bucket to really help it or do they want to actually do make that big divide between between the wealth and the poorest while trying to get it back to normal so everything's normal in our minds but they have well, I, I they just robbed gonna... the bank well I guess that's a lot of there's a lot of questions there. So 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 what specifically are you are you are you asking me? So I'm not answering. Yeah, it's questions. it's real. I I know I tried to encapsulate it because I'd rather listen to you. There's a lot there. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd rather <laughs> listen to you. Um, no, I want to hear what you have to say. It, I want to I want to understand what you're saying so it's, I can well, ponder that. It's it's a thousand. Okay, Trump. Trump. Trump is asking Trump? for. A stimulus package of 850 billion, I believe. Right. Is the okay. Last number I heard, yeah. So that to me is like, how long is that? Is that serious enough, in your opinion, to help? Uh, and that's going well, to throw money. How, you know, the, the math doesn't work for me. So can you? you well, ironically, I, here, here's here's the scary part. Um, you know, Trump's stimulus package and what Romney, the Republican, um, has proposed as well is actually more generous 
than what the DN the DNC the Democrat Party what was putting out. Oh yeah. Or not. Oh yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's even scarier. Yep. So um, Trump has turned to a uh, has turned to uh, our uh, J uh, not a JFK uh, FDR kind of solution a blended you know type of social. It, it, I will give him credit for this, and I don't like to give him credit for anything. But based on his proposal, I am seeing a fairly balanced mix of socialism for obviously corporations, which that's not that's nothing new. That hasn't changed. But it's actually being combined with in his package with some socialism for the average United States citizen. I saw a floated forty two hundred dollar check a quarter starting as early as two weeks from now. So it would be $4,200 and then you wait out another three months and another $4,200. I had also seen about $1,000 a month, which if you add it up, it's, you know, other than the $200 you're talking, you know, you're in the $4,000 range. Um, Or actually, no, if it's a quarter, the quarter amount would be more generous. But um, it remains to be seen. I did see some really good things that I thought were worthy of being uh, floated, uh, being proposed in terms of small business rescue packages. Um, I know my bank sent me an email yesterday, two days about, ago, saying if I needed an SBA loan, grant kind of loan thing, that funds were being made available to, you know, to sent me a link to look into that. It's not something that we need, but it's good to know. Um, so I'm not going to... I try to be really fair. I don't, I'm, I'm not a Trump girl at all. I voted Jill Stein. Um, but I will tell you, I am about facts and I am about the truth. And if that's what he's proposing, then I'm, I got to give him some, I got to give him some props for that. When you have the Democrats proposing having means testing on this, not to scale this, not and to have it be very um, carved out. And, and to, to kind of pull back because what are they doing? They're protecting the banks. They're protect. They're protecting their donors. Uh, businesses. Yeah. They're, you know, suddenly they're they're protecting our our our, our, our revenue. Um, they they aren't talking about scaling anything back that I saw for corporations for bailouts for for the airline industry. And I've seen it proposed that I'm not sure if it was might have been Tulsi Gabbard. I know there was one. Yeah, Tulsi uh, had one in there. Yeah. Tulsi, I know, did a proposal, but if there was somebody else, another woman, she might have been, a, I think she was a Democrat, and, and I, I, again, she's a Democrat, but I'm going to give her props for this. She proposed that if we're going to bail out the airline industry, we darn well better put stipulations and restrictions on how they can use the money, because if they use it to, to do another, to, to keep their stock elevated and to do another stock buyback, and, and also to um, allow the CEOs of the officers of the companies to, to, to take an exit package out, with inflated stocks, you know, valuation, um, then then no, that that money shouldn't be loaned out. It, it should be only they have to be audited and be clear that it's been used for the things it's supposed to be used for, for operating revenue. Right. I to think your expenses to keep the pay their employees paid. You're referring to I think it was Kristen Gillibrand. I think um, I'm thinking she was. Yeah, it might yeah. have been. I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I have to admit, I didn't focus yeah. too much on it. I just kind of was like flipping yeah. through, but yeah. I caught some of what she said. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, she was yeah. right on the money. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to isolate these for my memory when somebody mm-hmm. does pop up, and certainly Tulsi, and and your point. Yeah, it's not about Trump, and that's why I was kind of hedging on my words, Trump, but the package itself from whoever's you know turning the wheels and the dials and things. So. Um, I'm just wondering if, you know, you look at it like that and you're saying 4200 bucks a quarter. Now that's going to go to every, do we know every, it's going to? Every, what I saw, every citizen. Every citizen, no matter what their state is, if they're on Social Security or disability or uh, any of that, that should go to there, those. There was, there was no qualifications Certainly I, wasn't going to just Republicans. It yeah. certainly wasn't going to get us. Well, to yeah, I, I'm just wondering you know? what the litmus would be if there was going to be a litmus, particularly when they come through. And there have been things in the past that says, well, you're already being 
subsidized by the government through your disability or through you know social security so we're not going to give you you mean this. if there's if there's going to be like an offset yeah uh, an offset yeah for that. I, they, they didn't they didn't say and again more has to come out i know that um as as you know and as i did post today i announced you know to people who didn't know uh weird fact but i'm an unemployment expert so i want to also say that um unemployment's going to be a factor we're very concerned in our business because our job is to be the intermediary between the employee intermediary between the employer and the and the, and yeah. the state offices. Yeah. And great That's, when yeah. claims come up, we are the ones that are to, you know that should be paid. Our job is to explain and educate this to employers so they understand this is not something you fight. And I will tell you, I have great clients, so they aren't going to fight this. They're 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 in fact scrambling to find out what they need to do to help themselves help the cl the claimants their workers sure and i think more employers are in that in that category than not and, I, and it's important to point that out so i mean i deal with them we're a national company i deal with them all over the place and mm -hmm. um i'm really proud of my clients so what i can tell you is um even though i represent employers in my role uh, professionally um I also have represented individual claimants and actually some people that I know in the Facebook community, I've consulted with them, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this available, um, my services and my expertise available to individual claimants who are affected and have legitimate COVID-19 work separation claims. Um, I saw a, a person state on Twitter today that they were separated or they could go go to work because of the COVID-19 and that the employer responded by saying they weren't separated, that they were basically still employed and that they were, um, it was a really weird term and that they were denied benefits. And I said, you, that's wrong. Um, that is a, a kind of response that's gonna at the, at the least delay the claim and make cause this person to be denied benefits. Because if you're still employed um, and there's a question about that and you're not technically, you may not technically be technically be separated, but you're subject to what is called recall. You're considered still an employee because they haven't, you know, terminated them. Mm -hmm. Depending on the response of the language, that person could not get benefits and then have to go through an appeal process, which could take weeks because it's, it's the system is going to. The, the state unemployment systems are going to are, are going to crash. I mean, they're going to be inundated. So, so that's you, a catastrophic load. Yeah. So potentially, it's it's going to cause financially more hardship by fighting these things, mm -hmm. instead of just saying this is this is it. We're we're going to put it out here like this. It's for each American citizen, right? Well, I we're telling our clients, do not when we when we when we tell you there's a claim that comes in, and we push it out to you. We push that we push a list to our clients and then they have to either through a data feed or through an Excel spreadsheet, whatever, depending on the size, they push back to us who's going to be the effective parties and who's going to be eligible or who they've released. Okay. Um, we represent a lot of municipalities and school systems. Well, we know what's happened to the schools, right? So these people are all shut down. They ha don't have any work. We need to get their list back. Now, if they get the list back to us and they say these are all COVID-19 um, event releases, that's what we're going to say to the state. No protest. Let them collect. If they respond incorrectly and put the information that this employer put because they don't know, they don't have, not, a, not you know, pumping my company, but they don't have an expert Rec, uh, advising them how to respond to the claim, they may inadvertently cause the claimant to be without unemployment benefits for weeks, maybe months. Okay, so if so it comes if, if it comes down, it would be probably parsed like the COVID nineteen relief bill or the package, the COVID nineteen package, and that in itself should just say that's what it's for, and everybody's going to get it, right? They have to have the proper wording. Right. in the response to the state or the state will they because you remember some of these places still have employees that are are presently employed and are working and aren't affected so if they don't have the proper wording for the claimant and the claimant and the employer aren't on the same page 
and the claimant says, yeah, I am still presently employed. I guess I still have a job. That poor person's going to have no benefits. But that and just has to do with the unemployment, unemployment not on unemployment, not just whoever's employed or been, you know, laid off or, or or not laid off, but who have lost their job straight out because right. a lot of people who are on disability, who have conditions. No, not disability, unemployment, unemployment. just unemployment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. Seg I'm trying okay. to segue into that. But a lot of people are under, uh, have to take extraordinary measures depending on where they're at, their location, their proximity to resources and everything else over and above what their normal was. So there should be no denying anybody anything on this because like you say, it's going to get litigated and end up being so much more cost-wise and slow the whole process down. Is that is that kind well, of a good way to look at it? It's not just cost wise. It's, I mean, it's going to cost the system because they're going to have appeals and unnecessary hearings. But the problem is even in normal circumstances, just the normal claim load, and we are not in a, let's say prior to this event, Okay. It, you're talking weeks, sometimes a month or more before your unemployment a hearing comes up. Okay. All during that time, if you've been denied, you have no money coming. Right, right. Exactly. You're, you're scrambling. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's scary. So now you take unprecedented historical load of claim volume. It's going to go way up. I mean, you know, I'm looking at my business and, 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 and luckily, you know, I, we, we're, we're pretty as prepared as we can be for this. Um, and not all sectors of our, our, our employers are, are affected. But um, as things continue, that may not be the case. So if you take just my business is a microcosm and you stretch it out and you look and you expand and you amplify it across the country. Um, mm -hmm. If this continues, as things continue to drag on, then the drag on the economy, think all the closures, all the job loss, these are more people that are going to file more claims. And if you're talking right now, prior to COVID-19 event, the claim hearing was taking, you know, anywhere from several weeks to a month or more. You add the load, these people could not see an unemployment hearing and have it adjudicated for who knows how long, unless they waive, waive hearings altogether and somehow have a way in the system to approve these claims and get them processed that they don't have now. And I don't see that coming. I, I don't I don't either, because just the scope of it, I'm sitting here listening to you and I'm thinking of the magnitude of everybody it's affecting and some mm -hmm. of the bigger bigger um, revenue streams. Like I was thinking last night, billion dollar movie production investments. Mm -hmm. You know, they're mm -hmm. talking about that movie Black Widow. That's basically mm -hmm. toast now that they're going to have to shift over to like this Disney Plus service. They were expecting to make $750 million to a billion dollars at theater release. Okay, now I, I know I'm, I'm really reaching on this, but everybody involved in that production, as far as the unemployment and the loss, not to mention the profit loss, mm -hmm. when, when we talk about all the way down to people who are not so well healed that we've been talking about for years don't have $400 for an emergency in one right. week. They live right. paycheck to paycheck. So my point is the scope of this thing is it's planetary. It's planetary. The scope's planetary. I know we're talking about just our, you know, mm -hmm. our kleptocracy or our, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, but that's what I'm getting at. Well, it's, it's, the term I use, the term I've been using for the last few days is these are catastrophic claim levels, just in our industry. These are catastrophic. Exactly. So the system is not designed for it. We talk about, you know, we talk about the healthcare system and, and the lack of ventilators. And we talk about, you know, what are, what are, what, why we want to slow the pandemic, why we want to delay the, the rate of infection um, for, for, because we can't peak out, even though it might be better to, in, in, in terms of the virus and just, you know, allowing it to kind of peak and then peter out. The, we can't afford that in terms of, of our outstripping our capacities within the healthcare system to be able to, to manage a catastrophic load. 
it's the same thing. It's going to be the same thing. That's going to be a very similar dynamic in other areas of our life. The unemployment, that's a lifeline. It was designed to protect um, protect the unemployed worker through no fault of their own um, from, from financial loss and to keep them fed and to maintain the economy, for the economy to maintain their buying power. That was the purpose of why it was implemented during the Great Depression. And it's been a successful program. Has it been abused? Absolutely. That's why my industry exists. But it's also been in a very important uh, shock absorber and safety valve um, in terms of its economic stimulus and its ability to kind of keep the rudder in the water. Um, I have great concern. I am an industry insider. This is what I do for a living. I have some great concern about how this is going to impact um, individual workers, which is why it's so important. I would certainly would, uh, would guess that Trump and the Department of Labor and those um, advising the president and, and, and the Democrats, the Congress, our people in Congress and in the Senate, um, that um, the unemployment wheel is going, to, is going to be a lagging wheel. It's not going to kick in. It's not going to drive. Um, and it's going to be fraught with all sorts of, of delays because it's not designed to handle this load. That so, being the case, they have to get money into the hands of the United States consumer much quicker. So our elected officials right now, I want to mm -hmm. I want to go back to that briefly. You were talking about the Democratic response and I'll also say the the response from the administration in the beginning where they were kind of laughing this off and they sent the signal to the 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 uh, talkers, the the Rush Limbaugh of the world, the pundits. But, you know, that being said, they had to change their tune really quick because within a matter of days, everything went down the, the sewer. Um, mm -hmm. So they're having to actually pull their big boy pants up up there and start acting like adults. And I will credit them like some. You know, I heard uh, that that uh, Cuomo in New York was doing it uh, the right way, you know, with adjusting. Really? But the Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi, one of the things that stood out to me in the beginning, I think this was under 14 days ago, mm -hmm. that she said he, she came out. And one one thing she said, we're going to make this cure or this 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 virus, whatever they inoculation affordable. And when I heard her say that affordable, affordable, we're going to make sure it's affordable. I heard, Generous of her. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think was was not a gaffe, mm. but it was actually her telling the truth as far as her mindset went. You yeah. Know, with 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 an know, unintended truth, an unintended truth, which really, you know, and you said how underwhelming the Democrats response was Schumer and Pelosi mm -hmm. as being leaders. I, I, I really don't even see them as leaders, but uh, no. it, it blows my mind. And yet we're still not hearing a lot from them except condemnation and blaming Politicizing it, politicizing, politicizing it. the living daylights out of it, mm -hmm. instead of actually doing what needs to be done to get it done. And you're, you know, you cited, you know, the one, maybe it was Kristen Gillibrand or or Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard did come out with. It wasn't know, Tulsi Gabbard that did the thing that I had mentioned. She did say she, she did UBI. come out with her own kind of UBI. UBI, yeah, yeah that was Tulsi's right. thing. Right. But again, I, you know, I, I. I know it's not necessarily time to be critical, but that's what we're doing here is we're talking it out. We're discussing it and we're pointing out things that we have caught that I know many of our viewers and, and bombers here tonight have seen themselves. So my, 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 my question overall to this and everything you've said up to this point is when do you think we're going to see some progress on helping at least in an economic way? Um, my guess is Schumer and Pelosi and the, and the Democrats better better figure it out fast. They better re do some internal polling and read, read the temperature of this country. Um, we're not, we're not, um, there isn't a lot of patience left. So, um, and they are they were already on this they're already heading 
in the wrong direction on 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 the Agreed. election Agreed. on the on the primary process. So if they have any decent consultants on K Street left um, that have the ability to read the topography in this country in terms of, of where the where the public sentiment is, they need to truly get behind Trump and, and produce a bipartisan effort and a, and a product, a program that is going to do real, uh, re real good or do, do well, I should say, um, by the American people, at least in the short term. So you're um, saying this political brinksmanship needs to stop and they absolutely. need to. Absolutely. It, it, it can't be politicized. There's there's no mood for that in this country. I, I think that if it can if if this continues, um, that there is going to be an incredible amount of, of pushback and civil unrest. And the, and the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, you and I were discussing this earlier, the positives that have come out of it. So well, let's think about this for a minute. Um, the elections, there was it Illinois, Florida, oh, Ohio, they pulled their election and that's going to be, they got Yates to the governor on that one. Um, what's the other state? Arizona. Um, I might have another state I'm missing. Have their primary today? Or was it Tennessee? Has their primary to that today? Arizona, um, Illinois, and uh, Florida. Ugh. In Florida. <sighs> yeah. So you know, forget Florida. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> for for Sanders, that he didn't he didn't do well in 2016. So nobody, we already wrote that one off. Yeah. But um, by the DNC forcing these primaries to go forward because they, you know, they want to put a stake, the final stake in Sanders heart in, and, and put down this vampire um, that they're they're They have put them, painted themselves into an incredible little corner. What with, uh, from the, from of the optics standpoint, from a public relations standpoint, oh, because yeah. on one hand they're saying, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, the COVID-19 is so dangerous we can't have groups gathering of 50 or some, I think 10 now they're recommending is the guidelines, the federal guidelines under Trump uh, or more, but we're going to force people to go to the polls um, and we're going to force them to vote and to get out and stand in line and be close to proximity to people. And then not only that, as Jimmy Dore pointed out today, we're going to reduce the number of polls polling places that they can go to, thereby, thereby concentrating the number of people into, uh, because if you have less polls to go to, you're going to have those voters then concentrating and building the crowd size in the other polling locations that do remain open. And so, they cannot... Counter to our public health. They uh, cannot scapegoat Tom Perez on this. This is not something they can scapegoat him on, although no, he no. is the harbinger of the message. They, right. can, they will not be able to scapegoat him alone because everybody sees him as the tool that he is. No, oh, he's a complete tool, but he's defending them. Yes. He's, yeah, he's yeah. you know, he's the cheerleader. Yep. You know, go out and go out and vote. Wait a minute. Go out and vote in... And, and, and go to polling places and be in close proximity to people, but we're not supposed to go out for anything else. We're not supposed to go out with our families. We're not supposed to dine. We're not supposed to go to the movies. We're not supposed to go to health clubs. We're not supposed to go, you know, only essential places. You know, I guess we can call the polling locations essential, but there's nothing to be, there, there's no argument against postponing, and which is, I kudos to the governor of Ohio, yes. who said, "I don't care what the court is saying. We're not, we're postponing." Um, I believe he will likely prevail. Um, but when I saw that the DNC is now threatening um, the states who have postponed, so Ohio would be that state. Yeah, I saw that. Um, <laughs> They're threatening yes, to punish threatening them. Threatening their delegates. They're punishing them. Yes. Punishing them that they'll they they will lose delegates. Um, so I look at that and what are the, what are the hidden positives for that? Well, um, it's certainly going to magnify the absolute corruption and the, in the, in the voter suppression and the, and the unfairness in the rigged 
way that they are managing this. Like, oh, like man. people are just going like, what is that about? It, it is contrary to everything you're telling us in terms of, of COVID-19. Um, and they're closing polling places um, in locations that are high minority communities, high turnout for these minority communities and, and um, those that are more socially or uh, economically disadvantaged. They happen to be closing their polling locations by and large more than than uh, let's say your average white person uh, polling location. Uh, not to say that the, the the socially disadvantaged or the economically disadvantaged in white communities have not experienced that because I understand that has been the case as well. So you have them doing that. Now, who are the people most affected by? Um, who are the most affected by COVID-19, most at risk? Are the elderly? 60 plus, yeah. 60 plus. So you have the elderly or people with underlying health conditions. Yes. Are, 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 are not always, but they're yes. also yeah. are the comorbidity rate for sure. those in the elderly. Diabetics, rate. diabetics. Right. Yeah. Heart, um, autoimmune uh, disorders, all sorts of things. They go hand in hand also with the, the elder elderly community. Not that there aren't obviously those who are younger who have comorbidities so you have them do you, do you think that this group is going to turn out to vote i i think in a, it could in a in a in a very uh indirect way it could benefit sanders i don't know i haven't seen the the results of florida uh you know it would take the entire state not to turn out for him to win um so we'll write them off but other states i don't know it, it could end up working to Sanders' favor if you have the younger voters turning out, if you have the, those who, the, the less at risk, risk turning out and it suppresses the Biden vote. So maybe that's not the case and maybe the DNC has done enough studies uh, because you know they must have done some looking at, at the last turnout results and the communities and how the communities break down and said, you know, we're going to, we're going to roll the dice on this and we're going to take our chances. Or there's also the fact that, you know, as we've talked about that they can, they can tamper with these voting machines. That's it. Um, you just nailed and, and, it. And kneecap them very easily. You nailed it right there because I can't wait to see all the math being processed on these particular elections that are held today. I am going to be watching them like a hawk, but again, it's, it's the machines. It's the slipping the votes. It's the it's it's subroutines in the counters, the optical scanners, everything else. And nobody's ever going to convince me otherwise. Not that I'm not an open minded person, but just looking at the history over the years. Well, the uh, the exit polling data. Yes. Is is it, atrocious. The, I mean, and yeah. nobody wants to look at it. Yeah, it I is getting absolutely yeah. zero traction. It will never get traction because those that are responsible and charged for managing those complaints and looking at it are in fact the perpetrators. Yes. And or are amongst the perpetrators. So it's like going to the go, you know, we're we're appealing to who to help us with what? Well, and this is I want to make a point about that too. The exit polling company, is it uh Ericsson? Erickson? Uh, there's there's quite a few. Well, the one that, the uh, I think Erickson is one of them. Erickson's uh, been, Emerson, Emerson. 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 Okay. Emerson. I know it was on a I TDM so. TDM something site the other day. E EMT something. Yeah. Yes. And, and everybody was complaining. Well, this is the only one that's showing that. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. wait a second. They are the ones that are showing the disparities for in Biden's favor against Sanders. OK, mm -hmm. now they are out there doing this and they've been doing it a long time. So yeah. all these other polls, quote, exit polls, I don't trust them an inch. I would rather oh. put my faith more so in this group that's been doing it for the last God knows how long, 20 years, than a CNN or oh, yeah. a MSNBC poll or, you know, I, I'm even more partial to a Fox poll these days um, than mm -hmm. <laughs> which, you know, whatever. But yeah. this that being said, here here's a here's a question that 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 some people might find interesting. If our media was the same as it was in 1960s, in the 60s, 
versus what the media conglomerates are today, don't you think that they would be ripping everything apart at the seams instead yeah. of being the lapdog of these billion dollar media company conglomerates? Well, yeah, I mean, had Clinton not signed the, uh, what was the name of that bill that he signed? Telecommunications Somebody Act. Yeah, if he had not signed that in the Fairness Act. The Fairness uh, Doctrine, yeah. Um, the Fairness Doctrine. Um, yeah, I mean, you have John. You'd have John Chancellor and yeah. everybody else, and uh, what's his name, Hunter Brinkley or Huntley, Chad Huntley and David Brinkley. Chad Huntley and David Brinkley. Yeah. I mean, those were real journalists. Yeah. You never knew what they felt. They never opined. They, they never, never no, revealed it, what it, they felt, it, how they, what, what their political leaning was. Yeah. It wasn't entertainment. It was terrorists. actual news. Yeah. It was right. actual news. Even back then with uh, right. Sam Donaldson and some of those guys, right. you know, I, I just, I think that, and that does show the problem with the, the mainstream media, how it's captured, you know, the generation going out the way it has the Rachel Maddow's and the Jake Tappers and the well, Chuck Well, because they're not Todd. journalists. They're, they're, no, they're, they're not. They're, they're entertainers. They're and propagandists, they, paid they're propagandists. They're propagandists. They're, yeah, they're and that's, paid stenographers for the, for the, for, you know, our, our whatever the state right, message right. or the corporate state message yeah. is our, that. Our, yeah, our friends over at the Convo Couch and even Placone and right. Dora, they, they've talked about this, about how that generation is serving at the feet of these media million dollar pundits, the Dana Bashes, the John Kings and everybody else. And they they just worship it because they were socially conditioned from birth by mm -hmm. Walter Cronkite and Edward R. Mm -hmm. Murrow and and real icons back in the day, you know. And they which, I, which is I'm I'm grateful for the millennials. I'm mm -hmm. grateful for the, the generation oh my God, following yes. the boomers. Absolutely. Because they have far more, um, they have, they reject that. They are they far more discerning it. They reject than, it. Absolutely. than our generation or the generation ahead of us. And what's, what stood out to me today in particular, I have a very good friend of mine who we've been aligned on politics ever since I've known her. And I caught a, a taste of her vehemence for Bernie Sanders. And I know that all of her information comes from corporate media. I mean, she mm -hmm. actually... Hey, and this is a progressive woman, too, but she is so adamantly conditioned to hate Bernie Sanders. And it's both, reflexive. And, yeah, it's reflexive. And, you know, and, and, and I'm not trying to ding her on her intelligence at all. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. that reflexive thing. It's not her brains as much as maybe just critical thinking in this case, but she's mm -hmm. basically been poisoned by the well. And her and another friend of mine who is really sharp on politics, the same damn well, which is MSNBS or CNN or whatever. And it breaks my heart. And thank God the younger generation and those of us left – who actually pay attention, who have been able mm -hmm. to do the social media, has been involved in Twitters and Facebook. <clears throat> well, here's the thing that we have, which which I, 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 I cherish and I don't ever want to lose. Um, we have the ability to speak to the truth. We have the ability to, we have the freedom, okay, as things stand right now, to say, you know, kudos to Trump over there. It shouldn't be threatening to us to say, you know, he got that one right. All right. It shouldn't be threatening for us to say, I have a problem, even with close friends who have a problem acknowledging when Trump might do something, even if it's by accident. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sure. Exactly. I, mean, I don't want to hear him crowing about it. Right. He's obnoxious on levels I can't even begin to describe. He offends my general senses. The thought of him and Ivanka having their their picture and hanging in the White House when they leave, that hanging hanging there for years, disturbs me and galls me <sighs> to no end. But we have the freedom, and 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 we have the ability to exercise prudent judgment and fairness in saying. He got that one right. right, or, or when Pelosi might get something right, or when AOC might get something right, or when somebody like even Schumer gets something right. Or, right. or I don't have an allegiance to a Democrat or to a Republican. I have the ability to say, and we have the ability to say, use our critical thinking skills, hopefully, and say, what are the facts? What is it that we know? How did this evolve? 
how, who does this impact? To use our, our judgment and say, this is a good thing. And when we start looking at things through the filter of, is it, does it help the Democrats? Does it hurt the Republicans? Does it help the Republicans? Does it hurt the Democrats? Then we are no better. We, we, to far as I'm concerned, we have, we are, we have lost our ability to, to um, really take the high road in terms of our, our judgment or to, or to judge others, quite frankly. Well, yeah, we lost, lost our ability to be rational in discourse mm -hmm. and critical thinking. And it, once you do that, the outcome is, is nigh. It's not going to work because you're broken at that point. You know, you've picked, but, a, you've picked a team. You, yeah, you've, you've picked you've a team. You've decided that your life comes down to the blue jersey or the right, red jersey. Right. It's, and that is yeah. moronic to yeah, me. It, it, that is it's just like it, it is lizard brain primal thinking exactly you team, really it is I it is yeah team. yeah our our friends at the jimmy Dore show just just about said exactly what you said and i think you said it better as far as our ability to credit uh, an action no matter what you think of the entity that's performing that action right they're doing it right it's just like my my position on how i vote for a candidate i don't care what gender they may be or nope. what they, they look love. like or how old they are what right. are their positions that's what i'm looking at. i'm looking at their actions where they are in the universe on the p positions right and, and i don't care who they love no i, I don't, don't care what they look like no i don't care what they have for for genitalia, yep. I don't care about that. However, I do care if you're going to run on what you have for genitalia. Exactly. If you're going to run on yeah. who you love, yep. and if you're going to run on 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 you know your what what identity politics um, uh, issues. Yes, exactly. You're insulting me as a voter, um, telling me you know like these we got to get a woman in. Really, no, we don't. Yep. I'm, I'm, I, I'll tell you what. Everybody knows I'm a female, right? Okay, I'm a female CEO. Right. I am a female CEO who happens to be a minority. But I don't want that to be what I stand for. I don't want, when I walk into when I walk into a, a business meeting, when I have to present to a client, when it, when I've had to go in front of um, other CEOs or senior members uh, of, of of a company, I don't go, you know what, I'm a female and I'm a minority. And um, I think it's really, I think it's really important that you, you know, you sign with my company. I don't play that. I would be embarrassed to play that because they're only interested in the merits of what my company can do. What do I bring to the table and, and, and what makes me different? What's, what are the differentiators between me and my competition? That's how I've been trained to present. That's how I've been trained to view my world and my worth. Not by, you know what? I have, I have different equipment than the other company um, that's presenting, and on that basis alone, you should be hiring me. That's that's just an insult to me. It's 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 degrades what I know, what I bring to the table as 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 a business person, and I think the same way about a politician. When you have to run on that, that I owe you something because you're a female just like me. No, I don't. I don't owe you squat. You have to earn my vote. And, so yeah. and, it's infuriating to me. And watching some of the candidates or the ones that jumped out of the race, they specifically campaigned on the optics of their identity yeah, uh, yeah. several times. I mean, it wasn't all the time. It was strategic. It's who they are talking to, which is normal. But mm -hmm. once they the optics are valued more, we have truly lost when right. yeah and right. this is what this is what media propaganda what mainstream has been working for they want it optically to work for their audience because it what that is a success for those who handle that that tool that corporation well, if you're focused on the optics and you're focused on the surface it's, identity again yeah. the identity politics yeah of, of, of a candidate right you're not going to notice it will occlude your ability to notice how bogus they are in terms of policy it's 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 a, it's a diversion it's 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 getting you it's deflecting from the the realities of what they represent and that is why we are where we are when you know 
for for Warren to withhold her endorsement of Bernie when she claims to be a quote unquote progressive um, because of of uh, the woman comments, you know, the alleged slights that Bernie and his rude um, uh, Bernie bros uh, have inflicted upon her campaign. I cry foul. That's bogus, and and I I, I resent it because I you many of us you know, we're not Bernie bros. Okay. And the whole Bernie bro thing has been debunked that Harvard um, sociologist did uh, what 6.8. I forget how many million, I know. Yeah, 6 yeah. million um, different in uh, social media impressions and found that, that there wasn't even any, any truth to it. That yeah. We were n- no more nastier or vicious or sexist or misogynist or cruel than any other campaign. And virtual print media is still pushing it. Mainstream media is still pushing it. The mm-hmm. pundits, the talking heads is still pushing Bernie Bros. And what what really makes me upset is when I'm seeing progressive talking heads or pundits start using Bernie Bros in a flippant way uh, that's sarcastic that they don't understand that that just helps that whole thing keep evolving and coming back. You know, I, I would mm-hmm. never, you know, I'm doing it here. I would never utter that term uh, except in explanation as we are here. I wouldn't, you know, nothing solid or anything like that. So I, I brought it up. I brought it up in my, the last PBS show I did because they asked the question was the last question was, what would you like to see? And I said, I would like to see the smears and the, and the disinformation and the, net and the, the, the way they malign Bernie and, and his, his supporters right. uh, as Bernie bros, whatever I brought it up and, and, and I'd bring it up again because yeah, in my opinion, it's like, you know what? I don't, I, there needs to be a point where we say as supporters, we're not putting up with that. You're exactly. Not, and that's, we're not, yeah. we're not going to, you're not going to define us. You don't, you didn't earn the right to define us. Right. And, and you did it. And I have to, again, I want to compliment you and I encourage everybody to watch that segment. Um, you. that you did that was you were you were truly in my mind brilliant uh that well, night it was great. i don't know if i was brilliant but thank you i was well i, I was hold definitely you. right i was stoked i was I, I, was I hold you in high esteem without ingratiating you at all because it's how i truly feel um thank you. and and the, the other thing about you know this line that you're talking about line of what we're on here is the identity or the optics it's a sad place in our world today when a vice president, an ex-vice president, can get on national TV and so blatantly lie mm-hmm. on, his record. on his record. I mean, there were five or six blatant, downright, completely false lies that he kept doing and he was just being rude in the most condescending way every time Bernie challenged him or successfully or not by laughing at him, by sneering at him, give me a break. Mm -hmm. And it it was disgusting. And we're expected to vote for that candidate if he see if he is the, the nominee. So what do I do here? I know a known liar on a horrible record I'm going to have to vote blue no matter who because he's the candidate. Is that the overriding thing, the vote blue? It's just because of well, that's Trump. Always been, that's yeah, but always it, been our marching orders, but it's, it's, it's not going to happen. It didn't work in 2016, and guess what? It's going to be an epic fail and my, in 2020. And that point is, like we, we alluded to earlier, the only ways that I believe Biden gets this thing in the fall is if the voting machines are slipped, the scanners, the switches are done, or that the response to this current crisis is so bad that people get herded into voting for Biden. And I, I'm, still, I'm still saying they have high-tech and low-tech rigged this election from the word go using the voter suppression, using the, the mainstream corporate media, doing the dirtiest campaign that I've ever seen in my life, ever, ever. This is worse mm-hmm. than 2016. And, yeah. and to go into this thing in the fall, it's, it's, it's unconscionable for me to even handle. And I was even pondering because I was going to be one of those ones just to put the check mark in the box. And 
I, I've been thinking about it, especially the other night. I could not in good conscience do it. And, you know, I, I, I there's just no way that I'm going to write in Bernie because I believe the metric that will be looked at the most, if it is Biden and Trump, is the no votes in the presidential yeah. ballot. I think it would be more effective if people... If people do put no votes in that, then just writing vote in, down ballot. just vote down ballot, leave it blank. I'm mm -hmm. not suggesting this to anybody, but this is how I see the metrics panning out. You know, mm -hmm. I'm being realistic here. I thought about it, Bernie. Well, they'll just reject the, the thing off the gate because they're not going to track the write in by Bernie Sanders name necessarily. But the thing, the, th the thing is, even even with that, if the machinations are anywhere at a level that, that we're speculating, I mean, like what they did with. With I saw it happen, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it happened with Tim Canova's race. Oh yeah, um, great example. They, they oh, just need, they just kneecapped him and and, and pre-programmed the, the votes to allocate five percent period at every single precinct, which yeah. is a statistical impossibility. 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 So, yeah. Um, they're going to do some variation of that. Um, it also we have to remember going into November. It's right now we're going up against the establishment, and I think whether the however you want to define them, whether it's the Democrats or the Uni Party, is how I look at it. Um, they're going to the Democrats and Republicans have one thing very much in common, one interest, and that is to stop Sanders. So they're they're going to be in agreement. There won't be disparity, I, I think, in or 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 any any dissension in the ranks in terms of how the the machines might get rigged or programmed or whether or, or whatever at this juncture however when you get into the general election i think all bets are off so you know the republicans have their their um organizations and their groups and their networks and their one percent of their one percent to to please and the Rep and the democrats have theirs and i think it will be a different, uh, a different kind of event. Um, then they're going to have to duke it out for who gets what party is the strongest in what state that may have the most influence on how the election is is the outcome of the election um, plays out. But um, in terms of the primary, that's not that's Sanders is the public enemy number one in terms right. of, of how Absolutely. he's viewed by the establishment party. So absolutely. I, yeah, and, and I will I will take it a little bit further uh, in the sense of my opinion on that, what you just said. I think it's not necessarily as much the, the two parties, so-called two mm -hmm. parties, duking it out as much as it's the, the controlling class. Uh, and I'm not going to assign them right. a name. We all know what it is. They're going to have to decide who is going to be the best benefit or is it time to give some crumbs back to the people before they actually do yellow vest up and get in the streets? I mean, these are decisions that a very small minority of people are going to have to make that decision in my view. And I don't think it's restricted to just United States citizens. I think it's the no, controlling, these are global, they're it's, global the, elites. it's the they global no elite. Sovereign, yeah. It's yeah, the global they have elite. No sovereign loyalty. So they're, they're, they're they're yeah. not sovereigns of any country. So, so you you would say that I may be kind of like correct in my assumption to a degree. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, that's the other thing is we tend to because we're 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 myopic and we are exactly ethnocentric and we are United States citizens that that think you know beyond the, the Cal think between California and, and Florida. Um, <laughs> we yeah. we forget that. We, we, we tend to think that the, those calling the shots are Americans and they, they may well be a good percentage of them, but they're Brits and they're, they're even some Russians. All right. They are sure. Ukrainians. They yeah. are Venezuelans. They are Brazilians. They are Spaniards. They are Italians. They are French. They are Portuguese. They are Canadians. They are Mexicans. Okay. The, the global elites, um, have no loyalty to any they, they have no sovereignty their loyalty is to their own 
interests, their own economic security, and the and the well-being and flourishing of their class. Period. So they are going to land their planes wherever they need to land them and feel no sense of attachment and no sense of loyalty to the inhabitants of that of whatever territory or country or island or nation they happen to be visiting at that time. Um, this is not a this is a very different reality than the way we live. We live within the four corners of our house, the four corners of our communities, the four corners of our our, our towns, our cities, our states, our country. But that is not the reality of, of those making the decisions for us. Um, and it's really important that we understand that because when it comes push comes to shove um those those lear jets are warming up on their tarmac and they're gone right so right they're the survivalist um, class they're the true survivalists they're not the ones that go mm -hmm. up in the hills and live off the land these are the ones like you said they're islands they're lear jets everything they're you know who who knows branson's space shuttle that can go to another planet that's right. who we're talking about and we're not talking about a lot of people it's a very no. small group of people who have have hired basically their their butlers and chauffeurs for the future and who's going to take care of them who's going to grow the crops so once you have that and you know i'm sure there's a metric to count how many people are needed to take care of that wealth survivalist class which is frankly you know that's that's that to me is the new orwellian view of things from a, a you know view well, out. I, I think it's important because none of us thought we would be looking at what we're looking at right now. Never, right? I mean, never. we've talked about dystopian times. We've talked about how things could get, um, you know, a while back, bombers will remember, I did a program on, on Plum Island. And we talked about the paper, the Germans paper, uh, German United States paper uh, clip, clip project. God, can't get that out. Um, and how we brought over the scientists from that island and uh, he was working on an island in Germany, brought him over to Plum Island um, and he developed uh, use, using um, um, ticks as vectors right. to carry the Lyme disease. Yeah. That's, that's it, it's, it's documented. Right. Yeah, it's not that... even in dispute. So, you know, we looked at that and, and I am, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm not a moron either. No, um, you not know, at all. I, I have some powers of observation, and this stuff is available. No, that's that's all you have to do is some some not even incredible amount of research, and you can see it. Absolutely, bioweaponizing has it's a historical fact, and it's mm -hmm. it's not just in the last four decades. We're no. talking over a hundred years, hundreds of years past mm -hmm. bioweapons. I mean, you well, can go if you really back want to get technical. What did we use against? What did we use against with the smallpox against the oh, indigenous tribes? Oh yeah, we brought it on over, and here you go. Right. We're going to wipe you out. But I'll even go back to the medieval times when they were throwing dead animals into mm -hmm. into settlements to to clean them out. I mean, it's this is bioweapons is is nothing new, and the level of technology and the ability of the of the science now that we have can just put that on steroids that'll make your head spin off. And I'm not scared anybody it's just facts we have to face it's just well, like we have to we have to accept the, yeah what, it's what it is the, what it the is new rea the new reality is right. going to be it is what um, it is cliche as it may be it is what it is <laughs> so there we yeah. go Hey, can you check in and see what bomber comments may be because i know we're running a little long here so i just want to kind of check in i i mark actually has my Oh, so I can't tell. I, I, I see a, I see a lot of comments and uh, and I, I really can't isolate anything they want to ask. Yeah, if you want to add bombers, please. And there's a little bit of a lag, about a 60 we'll, second lag here. Please yeah, ask. We'll, we'll, we'll just close with yeah. anything they want to yeah, say. Yeah, help me. Yeah, help me out here with putting a couple of questions in there. I did see somebody asking a question before but i couldn't mark it because i'm multitasking here again and and again i, I want to thank you so much for coming on it's always a pleasure it's to speak with you and 
Uh, I hope we can do more of this. I hope you can bring other people on that I can engineer, that you can talk to. Uh, I'm just, I'm looking forward to it because guess what? This is all we have right now. We're quarantined, self-quarantined or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, I don't know if we mentioned it, but again, if you're having internet glitches, it's just being stressed right now like there's no tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Everybody's working from home, and and, and remember, like without net neutrality, they can throttle. Oh them yeah, and they're gonna throw. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, uh, Ajit, Ajit Pai, and I have a better, mm -hmm. better name than Ajit Pai. Um, any, any questions or topics? I'm looking. No. No. It is the thousand dollars a one-time thing? Chris is asking, or is it until it's over? Uh, I heard that it could go as far as July, perhaps longer. It's really kind of tied. It's indexed on, I think, like where this things are going in the economy and with the, you know, impact of COVID-19 on businesses and on the employment sector. Jennifer Vickers is saying monthly until it's over allegedly. Yeah, basically and, what I just said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, um, the Vic has got that right. Helen Helen says four months. She thinks. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely heard through July, um, but it could go up further. Yeah, Patty Tanner says one time. She's saying one time. She heard one time. Do you think Bernie would blow the DNC apart if he loses, Jennifer no. Vickers? No. No. Nope. Uh, no, I don't think, I don't he, think would he will. I, I think he's going to. I think he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And yep. I will ask you a question. Uh, Jimmy Dore has said this a lot. Uh, what are you, and I'm talking to everybody, going to do when Bernie asks you to support Joe Biden? I'm going to do the same thing I did in 2016. I remember him saying to us in 2016, don't believe everything I say. And don't, basically, he said, don't, don't, you, you don't agree with, you don't have to do everything I say. You don't have to believe everything I say. D you know, vote, do what you have to do. So thank you, Bertie. And I'm going to do again what I did in 2016. I'm going to vote either for Green Party. Um, Jill Stein is not running, but um, Dario Hunter and uh, Darlene Elias, who is from our area, is running. Um, and I'm hoping uh, I'll cast a vote for them if they're on the ballot. And they should be in Massachusetts. I don't know. I certainly don't know about other states. Um, I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to reward corruption. I won't do it. No, I, I, and that's what I alluded to after listening to Brian lie through his teeth. I mean, I think he did some more damage to his his you know candidacy just by doing that. Not that he can recover from what he's done to the millennials on down already. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, and we'll finish up. We're looking at possibly a low, the lowest turnout in history. Maybe do you think in the general if Biden's the candidate, or what do you think? Or the Trump derangement syndrome is going to get people out. What do you? That's what I'm thinking. I think if there's going to low, let's let's qualify that in terms of the Democrats. I think you're talking low turnout. Absolutely. Um, you know, you're going to have who is it that said? Who's the idiot that said that? Oh my God! <laughs> the yeah, idiot. One of the yeah. Pun, yeah, one of the pundits. I'm sorry. Which one, one of the pundits <laughs> said something about Joe Biden being um, the the movement candidate he the revol revolution candidate he got the middle class the centrist to to revolt uh one of our i can't remember one of the one of the bombers is going to remember who said that. oh was, my god they really did say that that yeah one it was somebody i think msnbc might have said that oh, and it was just like I, I, it was a it was a male pundit or reporter or whoever journalist and it was it was um um like amazing staggering staggering ignorance but whatever um he did he did say it and um no i think the democrat turnout will be underwhelming will it be epic i don't know i think trump's turnout is going to be huge yeah i think huge. i think i think trump's turnout over the top. yeah i think it's going to be over the top and again yeah. the only way that biden wins is through you know 
the machine suppression, whatever, everything right. but the kitchen sink, because he's not going to get the support from the youth, the millennials at all. And we're all set to be blamed. Everybody, Bernie bros, hey, Bernie, know, Bernie. You know, yeah. And, and, let and, let and him you know, blame us. I don't yeah. Care. And, you know, I'm going to wear that with a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this thing needs to be taken down. I think, uh, contrary to what that pundit you just referred to said, I think this is the point in time, the watershed moment, when the Democratic Party uh, basically digs the hole and lowers the coffin in. And we just have to throw the dirt on after this election because that's what I believe it's going to be. They keep saying if Joe Biden's in there... This is going to be the either way, whether it's it's Donald Trump or Joe Biden who wins. It's going to be a fundraising extravaganza for the Democratic Party. I don't believe it for a second. I think no. it's all going to come from the same filthy, rich uh, elements that have been funding this. Well, he's doing what? Two hundred and fifty. He's doing a two hundred and fifty. What was it? Million? I forgot. I saw something. He's doing a, some big events. Two hundred and fifty yeah. events or something for with with packs and and right big, right big, right and Bernie's yeah. Bernie's nine super packs that's that's just shameful right. um, when right. you know so anyway but they're, they're, these nine super packs are, are nursing associations yeah the National Union. Nurses United Sunla right. Sunrise Foundation right. all that stuff right. so this is you know I I hate to be sarcastic about this sit this stuff but it's it's surrealistic I wasn't going to say the other word surrealistic. Right. And, yeah. and again, I just, I want to thank you so much again and thank, thank, thank the bombers. It was great. And I hope I didn't, Always I, the bombers. I hope I didn't slow you down too much. No, um, are you kidding me? No, I, it's fun. You yeah, know, it's, it is fun. it's uh, Oz and Irish Dimson. Yeah, so, uh, there you go. I'm it, was, it was fun. I'm sorry I don't have any dropkick Murphys for you. I just can't. No, I can't it's find, all right. find Another one. time. But uh, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. you go. You there, too. There Every, you go. Everybody, you know, just keep it together one day at a time. Sometimes it's one hour at a time. We're going to be all right. We're going yes. to, we're going to have, we're going to land. Yes. Um, and uh, just keep the faith. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Right. Good night. Bye.